there is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. Yes. Hiya. Sorry we're closed. Is this the Southside Loan Company? I said we're closed. Well, it don't look like it. Well, I was about to turn the sign around. This will just take a minute. Come back tomorrow. <laughs> well, see, that's just it. I, I can't come back tomorrow. Nine to six, Monday through Saturday. Say, you got a nice shop here. A little bit of everything, huh? Bring in the merchandise, no radios, typewriters, or fishing poles. I pay top dollar. You do, huh? I have to lock up now. Bet you got a lot of rings, jewelry, watches, stuff like that. All in the safe. Bye now. The safe, huh? What about this vase? It's worth plenty, I bet. I told you, I'm closed for the night. What do you want, anyway? Just this. Oh! <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'll close up for you. Now just point me at the safe and I'm out of here. Probably in the back room. Didn't even lock it yet. What a loser. Now you're talking. Diamonds? Gold? This is worth a fortune! What? What are you doing? Calling the cops? That ain't very nice now, is it? Should have finished you off when I had the chance. Oh! Now I gotta use the back door. Hold it right there. Put your gun down and throw your hands over your head. Not this time, screw. I ain't going back in the joint. Stop! Stop or I'll shoot! Miss me! Eat lead, copper! The alley's at that end. You ain't going anywhere. We'll see about that. Oh! Uh. Portrait of a man at work. The only work he's ever done. The only work he knows. His name is Henry Francis Valentine. But he calls himself Rocky. Because that's the way his life has been. Rocky and perilous and uphill. At a dead run all the way. A thin, pale, stubby fox of a man who has eluded the hunter until tonight. He's tired of running, of wanting, of waiting for the breaks that came to others but never to him. Now he thinks it's all over, but he's wrong. For Rocky Valentine, a new career is just beginning. In the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, A Nice Place to Visit, starring Hal Sparks with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Mr. Valentine? What? Mr. Valentine. Uh, who are you? I'm known as Mr. Pip. Can I help you? Get your hands off me. Then do it. How do you know my name? It's my job to know everything about you, Mr. Valentine. I hope you don't consider me presumptuous, but I see that you're in need of your cop. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I guess not. 
White shoes, white suit, white hair, some outfit. Never saw a cop dressed like that. I'm your guide, as it were. <laughs> guide? What? Whatever you may desire. I'm at your service. <laughs> that, I need like a hole in my head. I'm dizzy. What happened? You had an accident. Lost your step, so to speak. Some accident? Must have fell flat on my face. Don't worry. Soon you'll be as fit as a fiddle. Come along now. I'm sure you'll want to get out of those rumpled clothes. Clean up a bit. I told you, keep your hands off the merchandise. If I've said anything to offend you... Answer the question. Question? I want to know how come you know my name. I believe I already told you. You told me nothing. We clue you, fatso. I don't like games. Oh, but that isn't true. You call me a liar? Not at all, sir. But according to my notes, you like games very much. Roulette, blackjack, poker, craps. We see that. Between the ages of seven and ten, you were quite fond of mumbledy peg. Say, what do you want, anyway? One thing and one thing only, Mr. Valentine. Your comfort. My job is to see to it that you get what you want, whatever it may be. Ha! Your heart's desire, as it were. It's a pretty big assignment, pal. I know, and I must say I'm rather looking forward to it. I'm sure it will entail a good deal of activity. <laughs> now, shall we go? What if I don't want to? What if I got other plans? Then of course you don't have to. It's entirely your decision. From now on, what you ask, you shall receive. Yeah? In exchange for what? How do you mean? What do you get out of it? Oh, nothing at all, Mr. Valentine. I assure you, the service is free. Don't put me on, fat boy. Nothing's free. Nothing. Anything I ever got in this lousy world I had to take. You know why? Because there wasn't nobody going around passing out favors. I'm sure there wasn't. So what's the pitch? You want me to pull a job for you, is that it? I'm afraid you don't understand. No? We'll see about that. Guess what I got in my pocket? I'm sure I wouldn't know. A 38, that's what. Take my word for it. If you like. Oh, wise guy, huh? Well, here's a good look. Okay, Santa Claus, hand over your wallet. But I don't have a wallet. Sure, sure. Tell me another one. Honestly. Wait, wait, Mr. Valentine. It isn't really a wallet you want, is it? I do carry petty cash. Take it out. Real slow. Certainly. Here you are. Give me that. Three, four, five, seven hundred bucks! Will that be enough for now? You got more where that came from? Oh dear, yes. <laughs> as much as you want. <laughs> I don't believe this. Now. Shall we go? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and Fats. Yes? We'll try nothing funny. I wouldn't think of it. Here we are. The penthouse. Hey, now. You like it? Sure I do. Oh, I'm relieved. Some pad, all right. Lots of mirrors, a bar. Look at that stereo. This is class, man. Real class. Chinese modern, I believe they call it. I was afraid you might find the red velvet walls a bit much. Not on your life. Who's it belong to? Some crooked politician? Why? It belongs to you, Mr. Valentine. That is, if you approve. You kidding? This is to die for. Of course, we can make any changes you wish. I wasn't sure about the pool table, but I thought we'd give it a try. Mr. Valentine, are you all right? You mean all this gets thrown into the deal? There's no need to negotiate. It's already in the deal. Look here. What? Didn't you notice what it says outside the door? Read the nameplate. Henry Francis Valentine. You see? This is now your residence. No kidding. Now, if you'll please follow me. 
And this is the master bedroom. Wow! That's a real king-size bed, huh? Emperor size. I dig the mirrors in the ceiling. Bathroom in there. Now then, I'm sure you'd like a change of clothes, freshen up a bit? Yeah, sure, but... But first... First you gotta give me the pitch. I thought I explained. <laughs> Come on! The gimmick! The angle! The catch! What do I gotta do for all this? Nothing. I can't tell you any more than I already have. Honestly. All right, all right, I get it. You're just a goon. I am? Messenger boy, servant. You work for somebody, right? Well, yes, in a way. When do I get to see him? See? Mr. Big, your boss. Oh, I really couldn't say. Okay, goon. That's fine by me. I can wait. So what's next? As I was saying, this is your wardrobe. I hope you'll find something that suits you. That's pretty funny. Suits. <laughs> Regular comedian. How many you got in here? Oh, dozens. Hundreds, perhaps. I haven't counted them. <laughs> something for every occasion. Any particular color or style? Nah. I don't care. You pick it. Oh, I could hardly presume to do that, sir. However, keeping in mind your taste, let me see. Perhaps a nice pinstripe, if the lapels that you're liking. That'll do. And to go with the dark material, a nice tie. I believe your favorite color is yellow. Mm -hmm. Splendid. It should go well with, let me see, a new pair of um, brown shoes. Like the ones you have on. Well, sir? Make up your mind. What's the matter? You got no taste? My taste doesn't matter. Perhaps these. A smart black and white pair with tassels and pointed toes. Fine. I'll just lay your selections on the bed. Shirts, socks and underclothes in the drawer. Quite a large stock. And in this ebony case, a selection of jewellery and accessories. Jewellery, huh? Let me see. Cufflinks, tie tacks, rings, watches, a little bit of everything. I'll draw your bath. Yeah, you do that. You do that. All ready, Mr. Valentine. I've adjusted the water to medium hot. Hey, between you and me, Fats, who do they want me to bump off, huh? Must be somebody important, you know? A real VIP. Oh, no, sir. As I've already explained. I know, I know. It's free, because I'm such a good guy. I'll leave the room while you bathe. Sit right there and wait. Yes, sir. I'll be out in a couple of minutes. Take your time. Please. Hey, Fats? Yes, sir? Don't try anything while I'm in here. I got my gun with me. One wrong move in your Swiss cheese, you understand? Perfectly. When I tell you, pass in my new clothes one at a time. Absolutely. And no funny business. Hey, hey, check out the new duds. Very impressive, sir. Everything fits. Of course. I'll say this, your guy sure knows his threads. Now, Mr. Valentine, if you'll follow me to the living room... What's all this? I took the liberty of calling room service. I thought you must be getting hungry. So? What'd you order? The whole menu? A little bit of everything. All your favorites. Steak, potatoes, spaghetti with meatballs, a hero sandwich, French fries, ketchup, chicken noodle soup, peanut butter and jelly, fried chicken strips, donuts, and a banana split. Won't you have a seat? Uh-uh. You first. No, thank you. I'm not asking. I'm telling. I want to see you taste everything. Oh, but I don't eat. So I was right. You're in on it. I haven't eaten in... Why? It must be two or three centuries. That's a good one. Eat! Or is there something wrong with it? No. Then chow down! I can't. I've forgotten how. Pretty slick. 
You give me a bath, some clothes, then poison me. I'll tell you something. You gotta get up pretty early to put one over on Rocky Valentine. You think you're smart, don't you, Fats? Yeah, you're smart, all right, but you're not smart enough. What are you doing? Just this. If you won't eat the food, you're gonna eat lead, big boy, because this here is the final course. You have me at a disadvantage, sir. I didn't expect the bullets to have such impact. I'll clean up the broken dishes. You got a bulletproof vest under that white suit, huh? Pretty slick. Okay, let's see how your head holds up right between the eyes. Mr. Valentine, please. Huh? I, I couldn't have missed, not at this range. That's just it. You didn't miss. Maybe there's something wrong with the bullets. Try that mirror over there. What in the... Mr. Valentine, perhaps you'd like a drink. Yeah. Yeah, good idea. Where's the scotch? Here. Hold on. Where'd this whiskey come from? It wasn't here a minute ago. I know. I provided it in case. What do you mean you provided it? What are you, a magician? What's going on? This ain't no regular apartment. Where am I? You might want to sit down. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Valentine... Do you remember when we met earlier this evening? I told you I was, in a sense, your guide. And you said you needed a guide like a hole in the head? Yeah. Well, as a matter of strict fact, you had a hole in your head only a short time ago. What are you talking about? A bullet hole. The policeman, remember? In the alley. They yelled for me to stop. And I didn't, but they... You mean I'm dead? Why, yes! By Jove, you've got it! Then if I'm dead, all this stuff, the penthouse, the booze, the free clothes... I must be in heaven. You're my, you're my guardian angel, right? Something like that? Yes, Mr. Valentine, something like that. But uh, And I can have anything I want. Anything. Big talk, fatso. Let's see some proof. Proof? Real proof. Right now. I want money, moolah, simoleons, cold hard cash. I gave you what I had in my pocket. Chump change. I'm talking about real money. Make it a million. A million dollars? And 5G bills. As you wish. Okay, where is it? Look in that drawer. Under the desk. You put me on a million bucks. But what am I supposed to do with it? I don't, I don't want to spend it all by my lonesome. No. That's no fun. I need a chick. I take it you're using a slang term. A broad, a dame, you know, make sure she's stacked. Curves all over the place, you dig? I'm not sure, I... Let me spell it out for you. Beautiful. Oh, now I understand. So, when does she get here? Hi. Uh, <clears throat> hi. Who are you? I, I mean... My name's Lita. What's yours? Uh, <laughs> you did good, Fats. Real good. Thank you, sir. Do you mind if I dance? Go right ahead. Mm. When I hear music like this, I just... Uh, I don't know. I get this feeling and I have to move my body. Me too. May I have this dance? Mm, I thought you'd never ask. Hi, you doll. Hi, yourself. Call me Rocky. Now I know I'm in heaven. <clears throat> Will there be anything else? Not right now, Jeeves. Very good, sir. But hang around. I might need you later in case I want more. Of course, Mr. Valentine. No more bets, please. No more bets. Hurry up, Rocky. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Are you all finished? Not on your life, sweetheart. How about 33 red? 33 red! Yeah! <laughs> hey, the gentleman in the pinstripe suit. Oh, Rocky, you're the man. The vet. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? 
I win again. Hey, Fats! Something I can do for you? No, something I can do for you. Put your money on the table right there. 14 black. Rocky's hot tonight. Am I right, dolls? You sure are. He is. He's a winner. I'm afraid I don't have any money. You don't? Well, what do they pay in? Halos or something? Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Combinations odd and even. Okay, let's go. No more bets. Come on, come on. 14 black. 14 black. Yeah. That makes what? 80, 80 grand. Closer to 100. In an hour. How about that, Fats? Is Rocky hot or is he hot? He is most definitely hot. Hey, Lita. What, Rocky? Open your purse. Go cash these in for me, okay, babe? Sure. Hold on. Yeah? A hundred G's, sweetheart. I count real good. Get me? Don't worry, Rocky. Be right back. What now, sir? Come on, let's see what's shaking with the cubes. I got this table spooked. Very well. The dice table is this way. No more bets. Oh, there's a slot machine. You want to play, doll? Can I? Sure. Here's a silver dollar. Wait a minute. I'll put it in for you. I got the magic. Jackpot! I told you. Ha <laughs> ha! Would you like me to carry them for you? Yeah, sure. And give the ladies a tip. Very good, sir. Seven out, line away. Oh. Step aside. Let me show you how it's done. That, sir? Here's your money, Rocky. Put it on the line. All of it, sir? Why not? When you're hot, you're sizzling. Money talks. Get your bets down. Hard ways, horn bets, any craps. Breathe on them for me, doll. Sure, Rocky. New shooter coming out. Yo, 11. Oh, 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 oh. Here you go, doll. Go get yourself a new dress or something. Something skimpy. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Rocky. How much loot we got? Approximately 200,000. Bet, sir. Let me see. Give me a proposition. How much for another 11? 16 to 1. Put everything on 11. Maybe you should hold some back, Rocky. Don't make me laugh. I'm gonna buy and sell this joint. Same dice. Yes, sir. Guess them for me. If you say so. Mm. Same good shooter coming out. Looking for a point. Yo, Alev. Winner, winner. Frontline winner. I'll have to get you a briefcase for your winning, sir. You do that, Fats. Get two. Get a whole bunch of them. I ain't stopping now. Not the way my luck is running. Never had a night like this. Place your bets. Okay, buddy, buddy. Let's do it again. Same bit, same bet. Hey, I'm dry as a bone. Anybody get me a drink or what? I'll get it for you, Rocky. Me! 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 Pressing 11. All bets down. Come on now. Like the song says, luck be a lady. Move your car, please. This is a no parking zone. Uh, whew! Making money really takes it out of you. Uh, where's the loot? I have two briefcases, sir, and the ladies each have one. Good, my arm's sore. They're heavy. I don't mind. Where are we going now? Uh, get your car, sir? Yeah, big convertible, pink and white. And be careful with it, you hear me? Yes, sir. Loading and unloading only. No parking. Huh. Something bothering you, Mr. Valentine? Yeah, him. The policeman? He's only doing his job, maintaining order. Lousy screws. Think they're the king of the hill just because they got a badge and a few lousy inches? How do you mean? Every cop I ever see is about six and a half feet tall. Look at him. Lording it over everybody. Oh, dear. That was indiscreet of me. I should have realized. Not your fault. Oh, but it is. I'll fix it for you. Officer? 
Yeah. Come over here for a moment. Yeah, what do you want, mister? Better. Sure is. Hey, screw! May I help you? Your hat's on, Crooked Trooper. Now get out of my sight, your mother's calling you. Here's a kick in the pants to get you moving. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> Look at him running on those little legs. I sure showed him, didn't I? <laughs> Your car, sir. Ah. Oh. oh, okay, kid. Here, you keep the change. Oh, that's a hundred dollar bill. Knock yourself out. Come on, let's blow this joint. I'll drive, if you like, sir. I like. <laughs> okay, Fats, put the pedal to the metal. Whatever you wish, Mr. Valentine. Rod's in the back seat, hang on. Should we fasten our seat belts? Maybe we're better. It wrinkles my dress. Hey, what do you say we open her up and see what this baby will really do? Very well. We're gonna crash. Not on your life. I got all the luck tonight. Punch it, Pip. <laughs> Man, this is really living, huh? In a manner of speaking, Mr. Valentine. In a manner of speaking. Where's my pad? Just at the end of the hall. Fats, do me a favor. Yes? I want to get rid of that heap we've been driving. Is anything wrong? It seems to go fast enough. Yeah, but the ashtrays are full. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a note. Change car. Wait a minute. Wait a minute! What is it, Mr. Valentine? We forgot the suitcase is full of dough. Oh, yeah. He's right. I set mine down and... No need to worry. After all, you can win it back tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. Hey, girls, go on inside. I want to talk to Fats. Okay. Sure, Rocky. We'll wait up for you. What's on your mind? How about tomorrow we look up some of my old buddies, like Mike Fink and Matt Gorman and Silky Armstrong? Hmm. What's the matter? Didn't they make it? Oh, it isn't that, Mr. Valentine. It's... Well, you see, all of this is your own private domain, as it were. It was made for you alone. What about the broads? I mean, they're extras, like in a movie? In a sense, yes. Everyone here is, except, of course, you and me. Oh. Well, we'll just party it up tonight anyway. You too, of course. I'm not permitted, sir. Why? Why? Angels ain't supposed to have fun? Come on, who's to know? Sorry, sir. Man, you really pulled rough duty with this job, didn't you? It has its compensations. Hey, Fatso, let me ask you a question. Go ahead. Something's been kind of bugging me. Don't get me wrong, I ain't ashamed of my life. You know, anything I did, well, I, I did it because I had it, you understand? Perfectly. Of course, I ain't saying I was the greatest guy in the world. Maybe I made a few wrong moves, but, you know, like a shrink said one time, I'm... Sort of a victim of my environment, you know? Can't get away from that, right? Whatever you say. I never got a break, you know? Never. Old man a drunk, old lady a tramp, no lousy dough in the house. I mean, what do they expect? I should grow up to be president? The thing I want to know is, how come they let me in here? I thought this place was for school teachers and like that. Oh, we have some school teachers here, Mr. Valentine. Well, must have been something real good I did once, something that made up for everything else, huh? Yeah, maybe that's it, but what was it? What, what I ever do that was good? So, uh, how do I find out? We have a hall of records. It isn't far. Perhaps you would like me to take you there. Are they open now? They're always open. Let's go. Wh wait, what, what about the dolls? Don't worry, sir. Something tells me they'll fend for themselves till you get back. Right this way. I'll ring for the elevator. Will you look at this? The files are over here, sir. It's the biggest room I've ever been in. You can't even see the ceiling. Strictly speaking, there isn't one. Valentine. Hmm. The V's should be in one of these cabinets. 
How'd they get all the fog on the floor like some kind of movie? I'm afraid the movies are only a pale imitation. Here, this should be the one. V. 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 Ah, here it is. Henry Francis Valentine. That's me. Born Brooklyn, New York, cried a lot as a baby. I did? At age six, tortured small dog. Well, why not? It bit me. At age seven, began stealing toys from Dime Store. Age eight, organized street gang known as the Angels. <laughs> How about that? Great bunch of kids. That's what we called ourselves, the Angels. Can you believe it? Age nine, broke into bicycle store. Age ten, beat up smaller child, hospitalized with injuries. Hey, what is this anyway? Your permanent record, sir. But it goes on for pages and pages. Nothing but all the bad things I ever did. It's thick as a book. I don't get it. Get what? You don't think there was a mistake, do you? Not likely. Then don't figure. Where's the good stuff? I wouldn't worry, sir. I'm sure the record is quite complete. Well, hey, if it don't bother him, then I guess I ain't gonna let it bother me. You know what I mean? I believe I do. Seen enough? Yeah. Plenty. What now, Mr. Valentine? Uh, I don't know. Maybe fool around with the dolls, maybe go and shoot some craps first. I'll bring the car around. Nah, I, I can catch a cab. I got some thinking to do anyway. Very good. If you need me, just pick up any phone. Dial 1-800-PIP. Sure thing. I'll see you, Fats. Place your bets, hard ways, any craps. Put it all on double sixes. All of it? You heard me. Yes, sir. All bets down. Same good shooter. Coming out. Twelve. Midnight. Winner twelve. Say, uh, you want to stay up all night? What? Double sixes. Midnight. Let it ride, sir? No, forget it. Your chips. Yeah, sure. Lucky 13. 13 it is. No more bets. 13 red. Pay the gentleman with the yellow tie. I can't believe it. Uh, don't you want your chips, sir? Mail them to me. Okay, pick up your hand. That's it. How many cards you want? Um, I'm okay. How about you? I don't need any either. Lita, how many? I think I'll play these. Dealer stance, Pat. What do you got? Huh? Now's the time when you lay them down. Oh, oh. Let me see. I got a full house? Great. What do you got, doll? Um, I'm not sure. I'll tell you. Looks like a straight flush queen high. Oh, is that good? It's great. It's just great. Lita, show me your cards. But everybody will know what I have. It's okay. Yep, you got her beat straight flush king high. I win. Not so fast. Any other game you could bet the farm. But here, read them and weep. I got a royal flush. You win again, Mr. Valentine. Yeah, I know already. That's all I ever do in this nutty place. Win, win, win. Is there anything else you'd like us to do? There must be something. Now nah, get out of here, all of yous. Sick of looking at you. Can we come back later? Don't call us, we'll call you. Go on, scram. Now what am I supposed to do? Play tiddlywinks? <sighs> Maybe a game of eight ball. Nah, straight pool. What's the good of that? One shot and I run the whole table. <sighs> Where's the phone? 1-800-PIP. Yes, Mr. Valentine. What can I do for you? You can get yourself over here right away. I got a bone to pick with you. Really? Stop all that creeping around. Why don't you use the front door like regular people? Anything you say, Mr. Valentine. Anything I say. Anything I say. Will you knock it off? Is something wrong, sir? No! Nothing's wrong! Everything's peachy! Look, I've been here for a month and I can't take it anymore. I don't understand. I'll spell it out. I'm bored, fatso. I'm bored. There's no excitement around here, you dig? No kicks. 
But the gambling, I thought you enjoyed it. I do, but when you win every time, that ain't gambling, that's charity. I could arrange for you to lose occasionally, would that help? Yeah, maybe. No, no good, I'd know. Perhaps you miss your old vocation. Now you're getting warm. There's a nice bank you could rob. It's on the corner. Or would you prefer a jewelry store? Bank's okay, I guess. Fine. Now, as to the getaway car, we have quite a wide selection. Something inconspicuous, I imagine. Any chance I'll get caught? Certainly, if that's what you'd like. Let me make a note of it. Look, don't bother. Look, Fatso, I don't know how to say this, but it just ain't the same thing. What's the kick in knocking off a bank if everybody's in on it, huh? Even the dames. I never thought I'd get bored with beautiful dames, but... See, I wouldn't expect an angel to understand this. Scoring with a chick doesn't mean anything if she's set up in advance. I mean, everything's great, really great. It's just the way I always imagined it. But, see, I tell you, Fats, I don't think I fit in here. Oh, nonsense. Of course you do. No, I'm serious. Somebody must have goofed. Look, I'm going to go nuts if I have to stay here another day. I, I just don't belong in heaven. I, wa I want to go to... I want to go to the other place. Heaven? <laughs> Whatever gave you the idea you were in heaven? Mr. Valentine, this yes, is yes, the yes, other yes. place. <laughs> 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 Portrait of Henry Francis Valentine. Small-time crook, grifter, thief, and worse. A scared, angry little man who never got the breaks he thought he deserved. Now he has everything he ever wanted. And he's going to have to live with it for all eternity in a place called the Twilight Zone. More from the Twilight Zone after this. Hello, I'm Stacy Keach. I hope you're enjoying this edition of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. To learn more about this series, be sure to log on to our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. You'll find special discounts on our Twilight Zone audio collections, listings of our radio stations, links to other websites, and a photo gallery of our recording studio and some of our stars in action. Plus ways to contact us with questions or comments about the show. And for a limited time, when you log on to TwilightZoneRadio.com, you can send in for a free CD of the show. So be sure to visit us at TwilightZoneRadio.com. A Nice Place to Visit, starring Hal Sparks with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etcherson and written for The Twilight Zone by Charles Beaumont. Heard in the cast were Nick Sandys, Doug James, Laura Russell, Fernette Lebo, Amber Lake, Jeff Lupatin, Vince Amari, Kurt Nabig, Rosalind Alexander, and Carl Amari. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, XM Satellite Radio, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Jason Mallow for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. <laughs>